Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Moretti, the pimps, the players, the hustlers, the people, the bustle, and everybody else in between. The Friday Night Freak Show has a begun. UConn and Iowa have begun as well. It's a lot lower scoring than anybody expected, although we knew that UConn would want to take some of the air out of the ball and slow the game down. They've been successful at doing so, and they've been successful of keeping the basketball out of Caitlin Clark's uh, hands. 23-16 UConn right now, midway through the first half, we're into the second quarter, and uh, Caitlin Clark only has two points. They're clearly not going to win. And, you know, we got a problem as far as um, 34 and a half right now in her player prop. She scored the first, like, points of the game for Iowa. She took it to the rack uh, easily, and you figure, all right, she's off and running uh, once again. She's one for six from the field. She's 0 for four from three, and she's only got two points. Paige Beckers, not lighting it up either. Paige Beckers has two points. Uh, it's it's everybody else. Uh, UConn, UConn looking good. You know Iowa's going to go on a run, but they better start to, um, to pick up the pace and uh, start to play their tempo instead of letting UConn dictate the other uh, tempo to them. UConn are shorthanded, too. They're not a very deep team. you got to get UConn into foul trouble, and um, basically UConn are just suffocating them uh, right now. 25-16, we've just gone to a break. The The in-game total right now is 150-and-a-half. It was 162-and-a-half at, uh, at close, and UConn are now three-and-a-half point favorites. Iowa are plus 170 on the money line. UConn are minus 240. Uh, we got a full house on the program. We'll hit the men's uh, final fours. The countdown is on. NC State's woman uh, basketball team got punched in the mouth in the second half. It was a close game in the first half. South Carolina just destroyed them in the third quarter. South Carolina awaits the winner of this game, Sunday's national championship game. Meanwhile, NC State's men's team, uh, they get the Purdue Boilermakers. We'll break it down. Steve Merrill's going to step up and in. We got the Rage Red, Cam Stewart in the house. Rob Vino, uh, Rob Vino Sports from the PA uh, representing this evening. Mick Aussie for the D-Gens. We'll get a little AFL action uh, in Tony Finn for the Freaks. He puts the Freak in the Freak Show. Tony Finn will join us straight from the strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. NBA basketball. Uh, we've got games going on right now. The Toronto Raptors are actually beating the Milwaukee Bucks. If the Raptors got to be careful. Uh, Raptors don't want to win too many games. They have a top six protected pick. And um, it would be a disaster, an absolute disaster for them to finish <laughs> like seventh, you know what I'm saying, uh, and lose the pick to the San Antonio Spurs. So Raptors need to be careful. I'm sure they'll find a way to lose this game. They're getting a ton of points. I, you know, I thought they were going to show up the other night against the Lakers. The Raptors are are tanking right now deliberately, and they've got a lot of like people out all the time. And they've had a lot of like death around them. R.J. Barrett's uh, brother died. The head coach's good friend died earlier in the year. Uh, uh, Emmanuel quickly, what was it, his uncle or something? You know, the Raptors, like, personally have had, like, a, just one of those years. But uh, they're beating the Bucks right now, and they were getting a ton of points in this game. It's 97-96 with uh, seven and a half minutes remaining there. 64-63 for the Warriors. Late night games coming up by here. Minnesota Timberwolves and the Phoenix Suns. T-Wolves and Suns going head-to-head. Uh, this evening. We'll get you the starting lineups uh, for this game, even though I've got my eye on the women's game. I know not everybody is only betting on this uh, uh, women's game. And uh, we hit the we hit the game last night uh, with the Los Angeles Clippers over the Nuggets. I never really, you know, the Phoenix Suns, they're a tough team to trust laying points. I don't mind, like, taking the Suns when they're getting points. Asking the Suns to win by five, always, you know, I'm not fully down. So the starting lineups Booker, Beal, Allen, Durant, and Nurkic, Conley, Edwards, McDaniels, Reed, Gobert. So we're all systems go here uh, tonight. Should be a fun basketball game. And, you know, do I love it? No. Uh, but we're here for for a reason, right? <laughs> we're, we're here we're here to, uh, to break down the games, keep you up to date on the games, and give you some picks. So my recommendation, Minnesota Timberwolves plus the points. Give me the T-Wolves plus uh, the four and a half. And is it just me or is 216 and a half just a little light for, for these two teams? 216 and a half doesn't take much in a modern NBA game. So give me the over. Uh, give, me the, give me the underdog and give me the over in this game. 25-16 UConn uh, over Iowa. 
uh, as I just stated, Iowa really are going to have to figure out a way to get the ball to Caitlin Clark's hands. They can't afford to, like, they're already down right now by nine. They're kind of a big run away from, like, being in big trouble here, right? Like, it's one thing to be down nine, but it's not that bad. But the thing is, they've been down all game, right? They've never really been able to get on track at all. You don't want to go into the half down 14 or something like that. UConn are good, and they know how to, like, they don't make mistakes, UConn. Iowa have turned the ball over a million times so far. And Caitlin Clark has been pretty much invincible. And I tell you what, she looks tired tonight. She doesn't have the same step. Like, she's got to work harder when she doesn't have the ball, something that she normally does. She's getting caught up in traffic all the time. It was just a horrible possession. So she got the ball right now. Like, don't pass it. Like, if you're Caitlin Clark at this point, I know you don't want to force it. But she just passed it to Gabby Marshall. Gabby Marshall fell over, turned it over. And uh, there's a Paige Becker's three. As I stated, like, Iowa, it's like a fight. Iowa are on the ropes right now. And Caitlin Clark should know better. As I just stated, she just had the freaking ball in her hand. It's like, Caitlin, like, it's, it's on you now. The game is slipping away from you guys. If you don't take over and start scoring, your team is going to lose. And the next time you play a game, it's going to be in a WNBA. 7-0 7-0 run for the UConn Huskies right now. Now 12-point lead. I can handle uh, UConn winning the game, but I'm not going to be too happy if UConn wins the game and it stays under. I don't like this combo that's going on here right now. All we need is a burst from Iowa, and we can sort of get back on track, I think. See, there's Caitlin. She takes it to the rack there. The three ball's not falling for so just take it to the rack. The refs will give you the calls potentially, although it seems like in women's basketball, you can get away with more. Like these girls kind of really bump into each other and hit each other a lot in the paint, and they don't call it. So the, the total now, uh, one, wow, 146 and a half, close to 162 and a half. So we could have a halftime maybe adjustment here that we could jump in on. Problem is, like Iowa are not adjusting. It's interesting because the other night, the other night, Kim Mulkey, who's like a legendary coach, I think she's won what, four championships, three, four championships, right? God, Iowa just missed an easy lay up there. Um, Kim Mulkey really didn't do anything either to adjust to Caitlin Clark, right? I mean, she took Haley Van Lith in and out, but she really didn't like adjust or change the game plan. And it's a similar situation here with the Iowa coach uh, with, with Bluter here. She's really not doing anything. Right, like she's not, you know what I mean? Like saying, okay, we need to start doing this because they're doing that to us. They're just doing the same thing over and over, and it's the same result over and over. So 28-16, under four minutes uh, remaining. I look forward to getting into week two of the UFL, the final four tomorrow. We've got a big day of action uh, tomorrow. Rob Vino will step up, and then we'll break down the UFL. And uh, more Steve Merrill's going to bat lead off with the Rage Reddick Dan Stewart. The Friday Night Freak Show has begun. Sports Grid. Pretty much cut and dry that NC State is the biggest surprise of the weekend. I, I mean, I don't think anybody's bracket had 
<laughs> the wolf pack going this far. I think they're going to find a way to keep this one close. And we all know Purdue's tournament history under Matt Painter. They've had a lot of early exits when they've been good teams. And maybe this is the time they'll exercise their demons. It's kind of like when Virginia lost to that 16 seed UMBC. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. Of let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Appreciate this. You want your one of these? I'm good, KG. You want your ginger shot? I'm good, man. I'm good. I need some positivity today. I'm trying to cover this spread, and your vibe is off, G. What's wrong with my vibe? You got to get you one of these, G. Get to sip some of this positivity in your life, and boom! You see that? Spread's covered. Thank you, mama. In a minute, G. Ha ha! Let's roll. The Friday Night Freak Show has begun. This is Sports Rage. I am Renzi. 28-18 for the UConn Huskies right now over Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Clark just missed another uh, three-point attempt. I believe right now that makes it uh, 0 for 5. She's really struggling uh, from three tonight. She's, she's having a hard time getting open looks. Give credit to UConn. They're doing what LSU didn't do, and they're just sort of terrorizing her. LSU just played her man-to-man. And Caitlin Clark just kept beating whoever was guarding her. You see UConn are, like, shifting the entire, like, and they're not, you know, they're doing a great job. They're clogging the lanes. They're isolating her. They're putting her in bad, like, she can only get the ball when she's in a bad part of the court and stuff. You know, like, Gino, listen, man, UConn's coach, he's, he's, he's a legend for a reason. He's come up with a great game plan. And plus, as I stated earlier, she looks tired. Like, she doesn't have that same step that she normally does. And quite frankly, as Iowa just missed another free throw, Iowa as a whole, they seem off. Like, Iowa are very, like, solid. Like, they hit free throws. They don't make mistakes. Iowa don't turn the ball over. I think they – how many turnovers do they have? Like, uh, you can't have 10 oh, wow. steals alone. They have 10 steals. Like, Iowa have turned the ball over a million times, which they normally don't do. But it's still a game. You got a shot. It's 28-19 right now. But – Iowa need to find a way to end this half strong because UConn are the real deal. And you UConn, UConn already are slowing the pace down. So if they have like a big double-digit lead in the second half, it's going to be really hard to come back. See, there's Caitlin Clark. She had a chance to take it to the rack, and she kicked it out. Like, it's like she's – now she's not shooting. Renzi. Here's a big, big three that goes in for Iowa. They needed that. I do a lot of to- do a lot of stupid things on the show, like bet the Sharks. But when you see her prop at 37 and a half, I'm sorry, bro. It ain't going to last forever. It's 34 and a half. Yeah, yeah under, under, under. Uh, sorry, I thought it was longer. Okay, I'll double check my uh, statistics here. But yeah, sorry, I have a lot of parlays cooking too. But anyway, I'd be under on points with her tonight. You're right. This team doesn't look right right now. But you know what? If UConn gets a big enough lead, we'll see what the live number is. They're, I don't think they're going to blow them out. There's a lot of basketball left. We'll see. 
Well, it's only an eight-point game. I think Iowa. I think this game's going to come down to the wire. Mm-hmm. But at this pace, that the 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 tempo of the game, this is not what Iowa wants or needs. And they're going to have to find a way to play there. They're like they're playing half-court basketball. They're getting killed in this. Like Iowa are run and gun, fast, don't set up, bomb threes, play really quick, and UConn have just completely slowed them down. Uh, Caitlin Clark just takes it to the rack. Let's bring in Steve Merrill right now. But with all that being stated, if you're the Iowa Hawkeyes, you've got six points from Caitlin Clark. She's three for ten from the field, and you're only down six. Uh, so if you're Iowa, you're not in a terrible spot. People have bet the over like me are in a terrible spot. What's going on, Steve Merrill? How you doing tonight? Although UConn star Paige hasn't scored a ton either. He had three other players in the first quarter with the three other than her, so two ways to look at it. But, yeah, I mean, UConn and Iowa both missed some layups, but I feel like Iowa's missed four or five layups, some turnovers down low, and they're still, like you said, only down by six. Um, but Caitlin Clark really has not been getting many looks. Uh, she took some NBA threes that were good shots. I mean, her range is incredible. You can see how she's the all-time leading scorer. Uh, but, yeah, that prop was ridiculous, Cam. I didn't realize it was that high. It's hard to find a lot of college props in most states nowadays. But, yeah, that was um, inflating. And keep in mind, this isn't like the men's. You know, there's a lot of bad women's teams, so she can really inflate those numbers against other opponents. And UConn is well, a huge step up in class compared to who they normally play. Well, she did score 41 against the defending national champions. Correct, and that's the reason. Right against that's LSU. The so that's the reason these numbers are high. But you're right? talking about that. That's only like what's still six, seven points above that. And that was like an all out, probably max was, effort, though. You know, that's the thing. It was 30, it was 32 and a half in the last game. Like she generally in a regular season, it was like 29 and a half. She averages 28 points a game, technically, right? But it's generally around that 28 and a half, 29. But against LSU, it was 32 and a half. She dropped 41. Tonight, they bumped it up. The Paige Beckers one surprises me more. Like, because Caitlin passes the ball a lot, too, right? She, she doesn't just shoot. Paige is more of, like, just sort of more of an offensive. She doesn't pass as much. But Paige Beckers, her prop the other night was 26 and a half. And, Steve, the total of the game was 135. Right. And she scores 28 points. Tonight, again, they made it 26 and a half again. Yet the total was 162 and a half. I'm thinking, man, this is a slam dunk. She's going to nail this. Yeah. It's going to be a higher tempo game. She already scored 28 and a slow core and a slower game against USC the other night. Yet, as you stated, it's amazing. All the hype guys about Paige Beckers and about Caitlin Clark, um, they have a combined right now going into the half here. They have scored a combined 13 points. Unreal. Paige yep. Beckers has seven points, and Caitlin Clark has six points uh, right now. 32-26. So we got a game on our hands here. Iowa will be just fine. It's going to come down to, to the final couple of minutes uh, here. Uh, the in-game total, uh, let's see, the uh, 139 and a half right now. Dear God. I like the over for the reason you just mentioned, Gabe. You got the two-star players sub-performing. I would think we could see some points in the second half. They're going to open things up for both of them. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think we got a fair number here, 139 uh, and a half. So NBA basketball, guys, I'll throw it to you, Steve. I don't know if you had any opinion on this uh, game. And uh, I did, and great start for me, not. I got the Minnesota Timberwolves plus uh, four and a half points. It's 13 nothing for Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we talked about it on the NBA tip-off show. I did it with Teddy this afternoon, and – um you know, on the surface, Minnesota was the number one seed coming in today in the West. To see them getting points like that was unusual, but it just looked like maybe a more focused spot for Phoenix. I think the odds makers were obviously telling us something. That line actually went from three to four and a half, even closed as high at five in some locations. So I think that was the side the Sharps were on. Uh, we'll see. It's still it's still early. Uh, these NBA games, we know what happens here. The total is two thirteen and a half. It closed at two sixteen and a half. I thought the, the total uh, was a little light. We got Major League Baseball going on and uh, NHL hockey. The Avalanche and the Oilers are tied at two right now with 12 minutes left in the second period of play. The Kraken and Ducks have just started, Cam, and uh, the Vegas Golden Knights and the Coyotes have started. Any action for you with these late NHL games? Yes, I have the Edmonton Oilers live uh, on right now, 135. Um, okay, I'm doing this again, Gabe. Uh, but you, you know me, SJ Sharkey came through. Hey, 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 to all the people who are laughing at Okay, I know I do crazy stuff. But plus one and a half, two and a half, a three and a half, one. The Kings won a two to one game. We all won last night. Did we not, Gabe? Did we win as a family? Yeah, they won two one. Yes. Yes. But Thank you. 
What? What? But what? The shark. The, what? the shark scored like an empty net goal with like fifty seconds left. It was. It was kind of like. Yeah. How many times have we lost on empty net goals? It doesn't matter. You look at the ticket. You look at the cash in your account. I don't care. So Give what's the, the what's the point of the sharks last night? They're not playing tonight. So what do well, you what do you want? Is, point tonight? I'm taking another team that is an aquatic per, like a duck. Oh, another aquatic pick. Yes, aquatic. That's See what aquatic. I do with Steve? I'm like, where's it? What? Like, like, so you're taking another bad team. That's what you're telling me. Yes. What, what's He's getting there. He's getting there. Just give him the Gabe, you know what I'm doing. I'm obviously you taking, taking the ducks. Yes, taking, taking the ducks. The ducks. Oh, yeah. aquatic. I was trying to think of another aquatic masculine. The problem you know, is the mascot. kraken are aquatic too. They're more like, but they're kraken like sea Neptune. Yeah, they're not actually the kraken are like a sea octopus. But I'm giving. You, I'll take a nice friendly duck. Uh, Look at Kraken's fictitious. I don't think it's real. Kraken. I was just going to say, I don't know what a kraken is. I thought yeah, there's not a kraken. I think like a kraken isn't a real animal. It's not real. Yeah. It's a mythical beast that looks like an octopus. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's on bottles yeah, it of whiskey. comes from the water, yes, but it's mythical. Yes. Yeah, it's not real. I actually saw one today at the liquor store. It's called the Kraken, and he's basically got tentacles and he's eating everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's, there's like a whiskey or something yeah. called Kraken yeah, yeah. too. Called or something. The Kraken. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, where did like the Hartford that. Whalers go? Did they go to Dallas? Who, who the Whalers become back in the? They're day? the Carolina, Carolina. Carolina Hurricanes. Carolina. Oh, they became the Hurricane. So the, and the yeah. hurricane and the hurricane is aquatic as well. So that's a double aquatic uh, mascot for you yeah, right there. Is it a more aerial deep. hurricane aerial? Yeah, it's a system. <laughs> what? Sports Grid. Cut and dry that NC State is the biggest surprise of the weekend. I, I mean, I don't think anybody's bracket had the Wolf Pack going this far. I think they're going to find a way to keep this one close. And we all know Purdue's tournament history under Matt Painter. They've had a lot of early exits when they've been good teams. And maybe this is the time they'll exercise their demons. It's kind of like when Virginia lost to that 16 seed UMBC. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers, it's automatic. It's every time, not not sometimes, it's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports rage this late night. Has let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
All right, let's roll. This is Born Trades, a Friday night uh, free show. We're at the half. Just quickly right now, the Bulls are leading the Knicks, one, uh, 108 to 100 uh, right now. 32-26 at the half for, for UConn. And as I stated, and I guess, you know, you could debate it both ways. You could say, well, Paige Beckers really hasn't gotten going yet, and uh, and they're still winning the game. But that was a very un-Iowa-like half of basketball, as I stated. They're normally they're fundamentally sound. They don't miss free throws. They don't miss layups. Uh, they don't turn the ball over 13 times or whatever it is. I didn't turn the ball over more in the first half there than they do. I don't think it's nerves either. They were in a national championship game last year. She's on the cover of magazines and stuff. Like So I don't think it's nerves. They look tired. They just sort of seem a little flat. Like they're not getting, you know what I mean? They're, they're not jumping as high. They're not running as fast. Like they're going to have to dig down deep here just sort of physically and find that that groove. And it's not, it hasn't been pretty for UConn, but UConn are really just sort of boxing with them. They're just sort of like clogging the lanes. It's making, it's just making it hard for Iowa. They've totally taken Gabby Marshall out of the game. But with all that being stated, guys, it's 139 and a half. So we're up to 58 right now. Steve, you agree. You think we get there. I think we're going to get into the 140s. This game's going to open up, and this is, this is it. no one's going to tap out at the end. There's going to be a bunch of fouls in the fourth quarter. Like, I am expecting big drama at the end of this game. Yeah, Caitlin Clark's 3 for 11 with six points. She's 0 for 6 from 3, and she's not going to finish 0 for 6 from 3, obviously. And one of the reasons is because she's finding her open teammates. They're doing a good job doubling her. But the teammates have missed four or five like point blank layups. If they start hitting those, which they will, then all of a sudden UConn's got to start playing everybody a little more honest. I think that'll open Clark up. Um, but I think both sides have some scoring ability. And you know, in hindsight, Gabe, it's probably not a shock that Iowa came in a little flat first half. That probably was a good play in hindsight after that huge LSU game on Monday. Yeah. Um, an- yeah, another reason point. why I think L- Iowa will turn things on here in the second half. Yeah, it's a good. Uh, it's a good point. UConn big win against USC, but it wasn't wasn't quite as draining. Right. And it didn't didn't have the same hype around it. Um, all right, so let's get into the men's uh, final four. Uh, NC State, NC State's woman fell short tonight against South Carolina. Uh, the men nine and zero. They're on a nine and zero straight up uh, run uh, here right now. How do you think they match up against the Purdue Boilermakers, uh, Steve? Well, I think, I think matchup is the key word because it's not a favorable matchup. They're not a big three-point shooting team. Burns Jr. has obviously been great during this run as their big man, but now he's the small man compared to Edie down low. And it's also in a football stadium. You know, it's the Arizona Cardinals stadium after all the games last weekend were in NBA arenas. So we do have to worry a little bit about the sight lines. I think sometimes that's blown out of proportion. But NC State's not the type of team that's going to make threes and pull the upset doing that. And that's normally what it takes for a 9-1 underdog. So I don't think the matchup is good here. And it is ironic. NC State women hung tight early and then lost by margin against an undefeated South Carolina team. And South Carolina had some good size edges in that game. Uh, I think that might be what we see tomorrow with the men's matchup as well. One thing I do like about NC State tomorrow, guys, though, is that they do have three guys that are all six foot nine or bigger. Right, not a lot of teams have that in the paint. Uh, Diara, Diara, the uh, you know the skinnier kid that's been fasting. Um, he's he's a pretty tall kid. Uh, Middlebrooks is a big dude. Middlebrooks is six foot ten. Not really a paint guy, but he is six ten. And then you got you mentioned Burns, who's six foot nine and thick as a tree. So at least they have a little girth and a little size to to at least like bother Edie a little bit. Uh, but it's going to be up to the, the other Purdue guys. But that's the key. You're right, Steve. And I sort of think about that. Uh, I don't know how you feel, Cam. But if you look back, guys, think about the Duke game last week. Duke were leading at the half, right? So NC State came back and, you know, blew them out in the second half. But does it get away from NC State tomorrow if Purdue's threes are just falling and everybody else is hitting shots along with Edie? It could get away from NC State, but it's hard to get in front of them now, Cam. They are the definition, Steve of the speeding bullet right now. Just how do you yeah. bet against them? Mm-hmm. Can I ask a stupid question? Uh, since we've already talked about the Kraken earlier. No, actually, it's not stupid at all. So say NC State wins. Do you know what day Ramadan ends, Gabe? The day after the national championship on Tuesday, April 9th. Just saying. Well, it's worked for the kid all the way through, so there's no need to eat now. <laughs> do you understand no, when it started it started in march like you can't like you, 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 come on man like so do, okay can he have electric like what do you what's part of the 
You need electrolytes. Nothing. Nothing. Water. No. He can't have water. He can't have anything. He crushes like a massive breakfast and stuff. Yeah, well, like what's before, the time frame when you can and can't have stuff? My, sunrise to sunset. You cannot during the sun, sun time, sunlight, right? Yeah. No. And they're hardcore about it. So, like, they have it to so the they minute give them a stuff. breakfast? Yeah, yeah. Is he gets up, he eats a serious. Are? Yeah, it's like where he's, you are. He's two hours. What, yeah, you he know, can't so cheat. Now. Yeah. He can't cheat because last only, week uh, they were what, talking about that. Were, yeah. <laughs> last week they were talking about that. They're like, he's getting screwed over. I think he was on the West Coast. And it was like, Correct. God, it's even longer yeah. for him, right? On, on his right, body. Right. They were talking about that, but they actually have like a right. I remember I talked about it last weekend. They have like a, like a like on a clock, and mm-hmm. they were like boom forty six sun just set, and they they pound them with oranges and bananas that's, on the bench. It's like tick 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 tick. tick. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> but the thing is, you can't. It's not like you can crush a meal or something because no. he's playing. And he hasn't eaten. It's yeah. for digestive. So I know we're getting a little too detailed here. He actually eats well, applesauce. Just are. for the I record, I know a, what he does. He eats applesauce. And, and, Okay, you can't tell you this, apple sauce is light too. But I'm gonna say nobody else is talking about this Ramadan stuff. I live beside a Ramadan store. It's a big deal. You can't screw up with this stuff. They had a guy who screwed it up before. You get kicked out of. Uh, 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 you're you're done. It's serious. He's played through it. Like he's played Amazing. through it. You know what I mean? During the games and stuff. Okay. And but he's getting screwed over. Um, but you just said if they make it to the championship game. He'll be fine. It's at nighttime. The sun is already set. No, but right. game. They're, it's, the, the their game game's is at six oh nine tomorrow. Six oh nine. Correct. Yeah, the other game's almost nine o'clock no, Eastern, which would be I'm six. So he gets local. screwed over. They, They're they in Arizona the too. They, they yeah. go to the final. It's Tuesday. The finals Monday. Right, he could eat at halftime of the finals that. game because it'd be like six o'clock local when the finals tip off. Probably. Yeah, so he yeah. could eat like at halftime. If That's what it was. Wow, That's what really it was, Steve, for the most part during the tournament. He was eating at halftime generally. That was the gist of it. And there was one game where he got he got screwed over where he couldn't eat at the half because of the time zone difference. But he's not the key player. I'm just talking about he's one guy, but he's he's good. He's not a key guy. But Purdue are dialing it up right now. But I just like I said, I keep coming back to the same. I think the game. What do you think of the total, Steve? I th- I've got an eighty seventy four final. I think Purdue win eighty to seventy four. Yeah, like a lot of these games, you know, it's going to come down to free throws. And with a nine point favorite here and a twelve point favorite in the other game, theoretically, we probably should have less free throws because they're kind of ahead by enough. Um, but that can that can add ten fifteen points to your total. Uh, we could look at the first half under because obviously with the sight lines and a big arena. Maybe the pressure of the final four. If you do like the under, I think maybe a first half under is a safer play. And also, like I said, NC State, not a three-point shooting team, and I think they don't have as much of a size edge as they normally do down low. I actually like uh, Wolfpack under 68.5 for a team total. I could kind of see Purdue going either way, but I think NC State's going to have a tough time in a high-scoring game. They're going to have to have a low-scoring game. So whether you like them or not, I think they stay under 68.5. No, they're like three white guys, three non-white, non-Muslim guys talking about Ramadan. Ramadan. Hey, man, well, not getting this on any other sports show. This is serious stuff. You need nutrients to play in these games, man. It's a lot of, a lot no, of moving, I, a lot of running. I'll weigh in, guys. I've actually, ever since COVID, I kind of stumbled upon the intermittent fasting. And I go 12 to 16 hours every day without eating, and I work out on an empty stomach every day. And it surprisingly does not bother me at all. I feel 100%. And now, imagine, Steve, is, if you were 22, 20, 21 yeah, years old. He's fine. He's fine. But the right? difference, though, Gabe, is like I am drinking water throughout the day, and I'm also working out early in the morning, you know, and eating in the afternoon. So it would be tough to, like, eat a big breakfast and then fast because once I eat, man, it starts the fit system going, right? Yeah. So, like – Because you want to like, yeah, eat again a couple hours later. Yeah, so right? I, exactly. I would say if he's eating first thing in the morning and then going all day, that's really tough uh, because yeah, it almost you makes know, you more hungry. You know they have dietitians, like I said. That's why he's eating yeah. packs of applesauce and stuff. He's not crushing oh, bacon yeah, 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 yeah. eggs. I'm stuff. enjoying this Ramadan topic because it's, uh, it's no, no bacon for him. No, no so bacon. Actually, actually, that's same Ramadan. Yeah, no, bacon. Uh, no, no, no bacon. No bacon. Yeah, her bacon. He lost all of it. No water. What am I going to do? Never crust the crust crust the clown or his father. He's like you're a disgrace, and he goes why? Because you're an embarrassment to the family. He goes his father's a rabbi. And Krusty has his own like ham, salami, and bacon sandwich named I mean, after him. <laughs> he's like, I love it. He's eating it. He's like, <laughs> I you're that. a disgrace. <laughs> Krusty's like wiping. Why? What's your problem? <laughs> 
I like I like when Lisa's not eating pork anymore, and and Homer goes, "No more pork chops, no dad. No more bacon, no dad. No more ham, no dad. Dad, yeah, yeah. those were all the same animal." Sure, Lisa. Some magical. Oh, yeah. Some magical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> true, Lisa. <laughs> it's the same episode with the classic uh, line: "Hey, you don't make friends with salad. salad you don't make exactly. friends with salad. With the salad, you don't." You don't, you don't. I was a guy to go like a lot. Remember Barty told her when she came out, she goes, Hey, I got cold Gestapo soup for everyone. And Barty's like, Go back to Russia. Go back to Russia. Waiting for food. He's like, Go back to Russia. Yes. No, but I'm serious, Gabe. Yeah, like yeah. this, uh, anyway, we'll get off the topic. But I go to the Ramadan hey, you know store what, every day, and it's a serious Hakeem, process. I'm just saying. Hakeem Olajuwon won the championship doing that. That's why I remember. That's right. You have yeah. to have some he was in the finals. Like... It was Ramadan during the NBA finals. And I remember they were like, this is amazing. The guy just scored 40 points. He hasn't eaten all day. It's like Jordan playing with the flu in that Utah Jazz game, remember? Sometimes it Jordan, focuses well, you more. I think. Cards and drinking whiskey. These guys are doing it like a little bit different, Steve. Like, eh, like come on. Come on. <laughs> Did you have whiskey Ramadan? Ramadan? I'm with Cam, right? actually. That whole like, Jordan flu game. I think he yeah. was probably crushing yeah. cognacs. Yeah. And he was playing exactly. blackjack. <laughs> That's the first. Need the second one in a major way. Okay. All right. Need the second one here for you. 7461. The sweat, it's all I've bet. There's nothing from the oh, oh, missed, missed, missed it. it. Number three. Hit it. Come on. Hit, Hit it. it. Stop. Hit it. Yeah. Oh, we got God. it. Foul. Foul. Only on Sports Grid. Pretty much cut and dry that NC State is the biggest surprise of the weekend. I, I mean, I don't think anybody's bracket had the Wolfpack going this far. I think they're going to find a way to keep this one close. And we all know Purdue's tournament history under Matt Painter. They've had a lot of early exits when they've been good teams. And maybe this is the time they'll exercise their demons. It's kind of like when Virginia lost to that 16 seed UMBC. Newswire. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
Uh, Mick Aussie's going to join us in a couple of minutes. Got Steve Merrill uh, here was talking men's final four. We'll get Steve's quick baseball thoughts, and we'll get him out of here. For the record, we talked about uh, this game opening up. It has opened up. They've already scored 20 points in the first four and a half minutes of the uh, third quarter. And uh, we saw in, in, in the first um, in the first quarter, it was really slow to start. So it is, and the pace, this is what Iowa would want. They're playing at a quicker pace, uh, but they both, both teams just missed layups again. But they're playing at a very quick tempo. UConn's coach is like um, squawking at the ref right now. He nearly, he nearly just got a technical. This is good. UConn are a little bit rattled right now by the by the tempo. If I'm Iowa, I would tell them play faster even oh, now. Cool. Just pick up the tempo. This is a very important point, and you guys know this. The thing about UConn is they're a six-woman team. They, 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 they have no margin for error with foul problems, and they talk about this all the time. I, Iowa's a little bit deeper, so if I'm Iowa, I drive lanes, I do everything, I force contact, and you put these people in foul trouble, they got a lot of problems. <clears throat> that's not their play. game. The problem is, you know what the thing is? That's why depth. That's why you make them run and run, because they're, they're going to get tired, lack of depth. But yeah. it's the one thing, and it's frustrating as an overbetter with women's college basketball, it's five. Uh, it's five uh, fouls per quarter. They reset. Yeah, you don't get now. as many free throws. Yeah. Correct. Oh, yeah. they reset going into the fourth. It's annoying. Like men, annoying. like you rack up the early fouls. The, the women, they go in like the team fouls gets reset. So you're never really in the bonus ever. I'm not saying never, but it's rare that you get in a damn bonus. So, and most rule. of these teams, they they're shooting teams. They don't take it into the paint. Yeah, Who's Cam, I can tell that's not they do Iowa's it. deal. Like, the, think about uh, this logically, school. though, guys. Why would, like, that makes no sense. You foul. I'll tell you why they do it. I, I know why they do it, I think, because uh, the high schools and the middle schools this year, uh, middle school boys and girls where I've coached switched to that this year for the first time. We used to do seven was a one and one, ten was a double bonus, um, and right. we've always played quarters. Uh, they do it for, they said, for a safety reason. They want it less one and ones because everyone's banging into each other on the one and ones. I thought that was kind of silly, uh, but that BS. is the reason That's why they switched. Answer. I think it's a safety thing which i'd never heard before I'm um, sorry, and also Steve. they probably want less free throws in general no it's, i don't agree with the cam i'm just telling you that was the middle school reason for switching this year to the to the <laughs> same <laughs> format hey, Take, what, they what wanted to get rid of the one on one i said that to you what would you say i mean no, like but, but i thought it was ridiculous on. when i heard it but that's Thank the logic you. well i bitched last week about why don't they just do jump balls instead of a possession yeah error, right the same thing they said safety issue they don't want people whatever but so well, I, I think that's know, more of it just slowing the game down with the jump. I don't have a safety issue on the jumps like we talked about. It just it does would. slow things down. The officials have to toss it. They have to get them set. Um, well, it's like I, call, I, you know what the problem is, though, in college basketball? They do it too quickly. There's been, like, yeah. four of them tonight where, like, the ball, like, give the girls a second to fight for it. Like, right away, they blow the whistle all the time. Correct. You know? Like, the other safety one, we'll wrap it up with this, but the other safety one, like, I, it's stupid, is the college football one where – the wide receiver is down with one knee, even though no one's around him. They're like, wow, we don't want him getting getting exposed and getting hit and blah blah. It's like, it's like, come on, we're it's not the forties anymore. Okay, let's 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 change the rules a little here. So there's always always little things like that. All right, so uh, Steve, uh, UConn, Bama. Before we get you out of here, what do you think about this one? UConn and <laughs> Bama. UConn are a freaking juggernaut. They've won ten consecutive NCAA tournament games in in the last uh, two years. Uh, by double digits, and the odds makers finally made them double digit favorites, right? right? I mean, they were less than ten point favorites against SDSU, which was laughable. They were laying eight and a half last week to Illinois at at, at close. Right. So they finally said, no, 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 we're making it eleven and a half, twelve. What's your take? Yeah, and Illinois is a very similar team to Alabama, one of the top five offensive teams in the country, but one of the weaker defensive teams in the entire Sweet Sixteen. So very similar. They like to play fast. Bama plays even faster. This is interesting. It's kind of like the women's game tonight. UConn men, much slower half-court team. Alabama, just like the Iowa women, a fast, up-tempo team that takes threes. It's tricky. I like UConn. I'm not looking to get in front of them. My power ratings only favor them by 10, so you're right. We're definitely paying a premium now more than ever to back them. Um, If Bama hits their three-pointers, they can hang in this game. They could possibly pull the upset. That's the big X factor. But I do think either way, UConn gets their points. I like the UConn team total over 86-and-a-half. If Alabama speeds it up, UConn gets there. Even if UConn slows it down and wins, they probably get there as this Bama defense is very mediocre. I like Connecticut team total over 86 and a half. We don't have to try to guess if Alabama hits all those threes or not. Steve Merrill. All right, finally in closing, uh, Steve, Major League Baseball, how's it been treating you uh, so far a week in? 
Pretty good. I've actually uh, used some unders here and there, and I've won several free plays at Wager Talk, and the unders haven't been exactly strong across the board. I've found some spots for them, but a lot of teams are hitting the ball well, and we have seen more overs than normal early in the first week or so. Um, I think that'll cool off. Nothing too crazy out of the ordinary. I still think the uh, A's are going to be a pure fade whenever you can find the right spot, and you see where they're moving to Sacramento now for the next three years. Uh, Fade Oakland at home whenever you get the opportunity, especially the first of a homestand because the opponent usually does not overlook them in that first game. I read, I, I tweeted the story out last night from uh, sfgate.com, uh, which it was the San Francisco Chronicle. And they were talking about the stadium in Sacramento. They were talking to players, managers, etc., that had played in the stadium. And um, here is uh, one player. It's going to be a band box. It's going to be worse than Colorado. Expect like 10 <laughs> home runs a game in the summertime. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that too. It's, it's strange, hot, isn't it? hot, hot as hell. It's humid. The ball flies. The park is small. You're in the freaking California desert. It's a disaster. Like, nobody's happy about this. Like, they're going to Sacramento. They know now they're not going to invest in a team for another three years. So the A's are just going to be a free bet again for the next three years. And uh, next year, we'll just bet on the over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not every game. Yeah, I mean, look, like Teddy had a good point. Teddy Covers mentioned this the last week when the Red Sox, I used the Red Sox in game one, and then Teddy had him in game two. And he's like, whenever we get a focused opponent laying 140, 150 at Oakland, that's a cheap price, right? I mean, they should be over $2 underdogs in every game at home even this year. They have absolutely no home field advantage whatsoever. Oh, and now it'll be even worse now that it's official. Like, it'll literally be like a couple hundred people there. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're as lame duck as they can get now. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Thanks, Steve. That was another aquatic mascot for you, Cam. Take care, boys. Yes. Thank you. Duck. <laughs> Love fish. Yeah, what's up with the ducks? Still uh, they're losing. They're losing to the oh, mythical sea creature. One nothing. One nothing mythical. Still octopus. early. Still yeah, early. Yeah. I got a plus one. Sucks and a half, to always have I, to trail, though, right away. But I will see the, the you, know, I, you know what it is, Marenzi? That's my game, but I do have Edmonton Oilers to cash out a parlay. If the Oilers win and they just scored again 4 right. 2, and uh, all I'm looking oh. for is some monies to roll over into. Let's bring in. Mythos. Let's bring in Mr. Edmonton himself right now. Yeah. Big Rossi in the house. Yeah, Edmonton, yeah. Edmonton Oilers roll. What's up, Mick? Oil slick. <laughs> I'm doing all right. Happy birthday, Cam, for yesterday. How old were you? 50 I reckon? But anyway, I oh, had a great 50, day. Nick, 49. 365 more till silver status in Vegas, Gabe. You know the drill. Can't wait for the deals. <laughs> I don't know if that well, still exists anymore. <laughs> really? They're going to, right when I'm, okay, I, I was really looking forward to it, like ever, getting deals on stuff. You're saying it doesn't exist? That sucks. Boo. I'm not sure. I don't think so. It used to be at the Palms, the Sterling Club. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was called the Sterling Club at the Palms. So, uh, yeah, the Edmonton Oilers are up, uh, what, 4 2 right now? Mm-hmm. And um, West Coast, Mick, West Coast and Sydney are in action right now. <laughs> Point spread? 49 and a half. West Coast <laughs> leading 12 10 early right now, Mick. Wow. <laughs> wow. They've kicked two goals. Amazing. This time last year, they got beaten by 171 points by the Swans. So, mate, they're full of kids. They've got no good kids coming up. So, let's hope they battle for a while. But I'd, I'd take the Swans on the minus, mate. They got beaten last week. It upset me. They got beaten by the Tigers. So, Swans will be very angry tonight. Hey, Gabe. It's up in the Adelaide Hills, mate. Mount Barker. It's gather round. All the rounds of football are in Adelaide and surrounding area, my home <coughs> city. Really? You know what okay, I'm cool. saying? Plus what, 850 money line for your team, Gabe. Ooh, that can oh. buy a lot of good stuff. Oh, they're not Do winning. It. They're not, they're oh, not going to win. Come on. Have some faith. <laughs> No, they're not winning. Um, maybe they – I don't even think they're going to cover, to be honest. They'll probably like – like they're, even enough. though they're 49 and a half. The yep. total is 179 and a half. There's kind of a lot of points here. I thought you were going to say, you know, we're seeing. No, what we are seeing is Iowa have come back to tie the basketball game. Excellent. The momentum is starting to swing, right? Iowa picked up the temple. You know, basically it's been a tale of two halves. First half, UConn slowed it down, and now it's to their advantage. Second half has been pretty frantic and quick um, quick pace, and Iowa have gotten back into it right now. Uh, Mick Aussie in the house with us. So uh, what was your pick, Mick, uh, with Sydney and White? What was the point spread before the game started? Because it's 49 it was, and a uh, half now. Well, it was 60 and a half, so I took the Swans <laughs> to win by more than that. 
How's this? All of our teams haven't won a game yet, so I can't dish you, mate. My Crows are zero and four, and Cam's team, the Hawks, haven't won at all. So none of us have had even one win yet. Hawthorne's always been a loser school. I met a guy there the other day from there. He's, yeah, it's a bad vibes. They used to be good, Gabe. Uh, remember back in the day, Gabe? Collingwood and Hawthorne were like superpowers of that league when I was young, but not anymore. Uh, Carlton, uh, Mick, eight and a half point favorites against uh, the Dockers. What's the what's the play here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. Both teams are three and zero, and it's played at Adelaide Oval. Now this is interesting. I don't know why Carlton is zero and seven at Adelaide Oval, which is crazy. Dockers are okay. Carlton are the better team. I think Carlton will win and cover the eight. Eight points is not much. Take Carlton on the money line, one to thirty nine, and probably cover. But the spread's tricky. We know that in the AFL. We have a, a cool game here with the Cats and the Bulldogs. G-Long Cats, minus one and a half. It's basically a pick of minus 112 on the money line. Total 168 and a half. What do you got here, Mick? Yeah, Cats are going along very nicely. Bounced back from a rough year last year. They won it the year before. They got old great players and their new kids coming up are very, very good. Dogs have got two wins, but they've only beaten your Eagles and the Suns. I like the Cats to win, and the spread's only one and a half, so take the Cats to win and cover, and that's one of my best bets. We're not sure how good the dogs are. Cats are going very nicely. Yeah, I agree with you. Where's the game? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) where's the game? Yeah, another one at Adelaide Oval. So they're all in Adelaide and surrounding areas. It's the gather round. Everyone's gathering and being friendly together. Lots of people. Oh, from so Melbourne all the fans. So it's fans oh, from all teams nice. who just go and hang <laughs> out. And, they're yeah, they're that's not interesting. Any weaponry. That's, yeah. that's great. So Adelaide this time. is good proximity because <laughs> people from Melbourne can drive there, and that's where most mm. of the teams. So thousands of people from Melbourne have come over to support their team. There's festivals. There's lots of functions with all the media, like our road rages, but, you know, a bit higher level. So all the stars are there. Lots of events. Higher. Hey, hey, party, nothing's more it. higher level than Renzi's road rage. You you take that back, <laughs> man. Take it back. And I'll tell you another thing. I got to love Australia, Gabe. These guys find any excuse to party. Like, we're in the biggest <laughs> loser guy. We're so like, what are we doing? We're on about taxes. Like, come on, Canada, get it together. Like, we need more vendors. Let's go. <laughs> I don't think Australia is that big of a party. No, no, it. they do. They have huge horse racing stuff. I, uh, Mick will defend me. Horse racing stuff. Australians, they, let's just say. So you've got horse racing in, in Woodbine. You have horse racing in your own city. Yeah, it's not a party. Everybody hates everybody there. Woodbine is a bigger, one. bigger track yeah. than any track in Australia. I don't care. There's not a lot of friendliness oh. there. Everybody hates everybody. You know, you're, 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 you're a trainer. I'm not a saying joke. bigger, but in the betting yeah. world, I'm talking about. Yeah, I get to get a big handle in, uh, in what's other What's the biggest countries. track? And what's the biggest track in Australia? What's the most respected racetrack in Australia? Antipur. Oh, Queensland. Melbourne. Melbourne. Who? What? Oh, on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sports Grid. much cut and dry that NC State is the biggest surprise of the weekend. I, I mean, I don't think anybody's bracket had 
the Wolf Pack going this far. I think they're going to find a way to keep this one close. And we all know Purdue's tournament history under Matt Painter. They've had a lot of early exits when they've been good teams. And maybe this is the time they'll exercise their demons. It's kind of like when Virginia lost to that 16 seed UMBC. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes, it's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. Of has let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Yeah. 47-47. UConn and Iowa, we got a tie game, and I don't know what the hell's going on here. I think, it, I don't know, I got the sound down. I think Kim, uh, or Kate Martin, I think Kim Martin was, was not the goalie of Team Canada. Uh, Kate Martin. Um, she hurt herself. Is her no- oh, yeah, she got her nose busted open. She got yeah. like, blood pouring out of her nose yeah. and stuff. You can yeah. tell she's a tough girl. So um, that's the best. She's just gonna put the do the old hockey move game, you know, lick, lick up the Kleenex and put them in du- double guns and let's go party. That's a t- that's I like that respect. Well, she was just she just came back from the room like she so she came yeah. back pretty quick, but they took her into the room, so she's back. And I missed who just left for UConn. There's there was a there's a player on UConn that also went to the room and it doesn't appear to come back. So this game's getting crazy here right now. Uh, pretty nuts too, guys. Um, Iowa scored 26 points in the first half of this game. They've scored 21 points in the third quarter alone. Like, completely different team now, as we talked about. 47-47. We're going to have a real classic coming down to the wire here. And Iowa have just taken a lead. I was going to say it's their first lead, but no. I think they they were up. I think they I think they were up 47-45 a second ago. Mick Aussie in the house with us. Let's get back to the... Uh, the AFL. I'm gonna ride that G Long Cat uh, game. So what do you, what do you call it? What would you say? It's the farmers market, Mick. What is this? The, what is the friendly farmer? What what is it? Friendly? What is it? What's the big party called? <laughs> yeah, it's, they started it last year, and the Premier of South Australia went hard, and we got it. It's called the Gather Round. They followed with the rugby. Oh, the Gather so Round. Every game. Yeah, that was nice. Every game is round. in Adelaide. That's a good name. Yeah, you gather around and drink, and uh, we'll watch yeah. football games. Yeah. yeah, it's better than calling yeah. a bunch of drunk piss tanks watching sports. So yeah, gather round sounds amazing. That'd be a good That's idea, it. actually. The NFL should do that. Like, just put Thank all the games Dave. in Vegas one week. Say, yeah, we we have like all the teams are playing in Vegas on Saturday and Sunday, and everybody just goes go to a Viking game at one in the afternoon. Go see your team yeah. later at night. It's a good idea, actually. Roger Goodell, yeah. line three, you're fired. Rensi, you're in. More, more. Hey, ideas. Like that, Kevin. It's a good better. idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great yeah. idea. NFL, NFL gathering in Vegas. Yes. <laughs> eight games. Eight games in three days. Or like an, right. every team in three days. Figure this stuff out. Do it every night. Well, what-